Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about what's new in MOHO 13.5.2 presented by Victor Paredes. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, and Victor Paredes. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time and don't know Moho, Moho is your all-in-one animation software. Moho is a powerful 2D animation software that combines the most powerful animation technology with the state-of-the-art professional animation tools to draw, rig, and animate easily. You can create your characters directly in Moho with its vector tools optimized for animation or import images or Photoshop files, keeping the link and layering structure. For more information, visit mohoanimation.com. As we always do in our webinars, we, we encourage you to participate with us in this webinar, uh, creating Instagram stories and creating hashtag webinar, hashtag MofoAnimation, and add MofoAnimation. We'll be sharing your stories, and we think it's a way to share uh, the, the event with the community, and also to get to know, to, to get to know you all of who are attending this webinar. Victor Paredes is a Chilean journalist, animator, and MoFo product manager. He worked as lead MoFo animator in Wolf Walkers, an animated feature film created by the awarded Irish animation studio Cartoon Salute. Currently, Victor works with them in the upcoming Netflix feature My Father's Dragon, a supervisor of, supervisor of MoFo Read Animation. And with that, We'll pass the reins of the webinar to Victor in his presentation, What's New in MoFo 13.5.2? Thank you so much. Hello. Um, okay, I will show my screen first. Okay, hello. I am Victor Paredes. I am the product manager of MoFo. And we are very excited about this new version of MoFo, this new free update for every 13.5 owner um, and I want to start showing you um, the new characters that are coming in the library for this version. So first, um, if you have Moho here, you can just open the library here in this icon and you can go to factory content library characters and go to Moho 13.5. So here we have several uh, characters and the idea of these characters, actually I, I, I rigged and, and animated these characters and the idea is to um, show you part of the new features coming with, with Moho. So for instance, this one is the, um, if I open the broccoli here, I will open it as a template. Let me just minimize here. So here we have some use of the Vitruvian bones. So you can see the, the animation of this. And if I take the arm of this character, I can switch the Vitruvian bones. And you can you can look at the webinar, sorry, at the YouTube page. Um, and you can see the, the, the tutorials for using Vitruvian bones. Uh, but now you can check the file and check it yourself. So one, one nice thing I like about this rig is that we not only use the the Vitruvian bones to switch between different arms and legs, but we also switch the entire body. So we have uh, this entire movement. So basically we are moving from one completely different rig to another, but it is all part of actually the same character or actually of the same rig. So you can take a look there and you can check also the animation, some particles, some, some smart bones are being used here. Um, 
Let me just close this. And now I want to open another one. Ah, I have the library here. Um, so we have also um, this character, a crow, uh, which was uh, illustrated by Asara Quesada. Uh, and we have, again, this character um, running and you have some vitruvian bones also here for the legs. So the idea and what I personally like about vitruvian bones is that we can use it in different parts of the body and it gives uh, a nicer sensation of that the puppet doesn't look so much as a, as a puppet because you have different drawings for different positions of the uh, of the legs or other parts. And also in this case, we can also um, uh, use some meshes and actually I will filter here mesh. So, so you, we have some quad meshes to control the, the beak. We can easily animate that and we have or break it, <laughs> break it. And, and you can control also the head with that. So you can play with that. It's, it's like a very simple mesh, but it works to give um, a sensation of uh, a small rotation there. Um, so then the next character I want to show you, and with this one, I want to show you a couple new features coming here. So a small, a couple of small features. So now I always forget I have the library here. The next one I want to show you is the horse, which is using the, the new wind tools. I can just open this. And we have the, the wind and you can check this. Um, this is the character from the box of Mojo Debut, illustrated by Maria Pareja. And, and we can check the, the, the wind here. So probably you know about the wind coming in Moho, one of a very very small new feature coming with the wind is that now you can have negative wind. That means that the arrow of the wind can point, can have a a, a strength, a positive strength or a negative strength. So that means we can create cycles that go from left to right very easily without having to rotate the entire arrow to one side or, or the other. So you get like a, a a more natural look of the of of the wind. In this case, probably I, I broke it, but can you see that we we have like this nice sensation of the of the wind starting and stopping or going to a different place without having to rotate without, without moving the bones up uh, in a crazy way. So I think I don't know. I I really like this one. It's a very small one, but I I am really enjoying it now. Ah, sorry, I, I should have closed this one. I will open it again. There is another little feature, which is just a, a little script. So for this, um, I just want to take the tail of this horse and I will paste it here. Um, I will just create a new file here with the, with the vector layers of this horse. And we have a new option to easily add some noise to to a character. So if we go to, um, let me remember where this is. Um, I think it was in, no, in animation, I think. Yeah. So if you go to script animation, uh, you can go to noisy point animation and you have some, some options here for noisy. It's basically adding some noise. Uh, so we can select the amplitude, the scale and an interval interval of this. So now we have some noise here. Maybe this is too big, <laughs> but if we, if we set, I will undo this. And if we, if we set some sm smaller values, so for instance, 0 0.1 and maybe this one, 0 0.01. And you can get like a nice uh, noise, some kind of frame by frame noise happening in these points. And you can rig this and you can still animate it as a normal Moho character, but you have this kind of nice noise. Um, now, let me open another of the files. This is still, these are all still like the small new features coming with Moho. Um, if I open the Fox, 
So I'm just opening the characters in the library. You will have access to all these characters. So you can do um, whatever you want with them. So here we have the seal uh, coming in the Moho Pro box. But this is also using uh, wind, uh, using some rigging techniques, Viturian bones in some, some of the parts, uh, meshes, and also some of the parts are using the new um, the new um, the new meshes that are coming with um, Moho 30.5.2. So, for instance, the, uh, the this hand here is using the new meshes. I will show you the the new meshes in a in a better example later. But you can see these little lines here, um, and they they work to modify to quickly modify the character following uh, a, a structure that we can give give to the character. Okay, but I will show you this uh, later. So let me continue. I'm trying to be quick here because I want to show you several things. Uh, then we have this character, uh, which is again, it's using Vitruvian bones, some wind and some meshes also. So you can play with this. This, this was illustrated by Alfredo Cáceres. Uh, you can follow him. We are giving credits to every artist here. So you can check the credits in the, in the Moho files there and if you like the art please follow them and support them in in i don't know the way you want uh, they are very good very nice people too um and finally i think we have the vitruvian man which is the the project we use to show the the new vitruvian bone so now you can play with this character also illustrated by maria pareja um so we have several controls here. We have some smart bones controlled by this uh, pin bone. We can control the pupils here and make it blink. And of course, switch between different arms and legs. So yeah, this is all here. So you can play with it and you can learn and maybe apply some of the stuff here to uh, your characters. Now, the next, next thing I want to show you is the Photoshop import. Um, and I want to talk about this because we, we already supported Photoshop import, Photoshop files import, PSD files import, really. So it's not exclusive to Photoshop. You, it's, it's for any, any drawing or any character you are imported, importing for any software that can export to PSD. So it can be Photoshop or it can be Clip Studio paint or gimp or i don't know rebel or any other software you you could be using so uh for this in this case i will i will be using photoshop uh so here is photoshop and i have this character here which is i'm loading it so is this bat it's a very very simple character um so i mean it's separated in layers it's, there is nothing too complex happening here now one of the of the new things that moho now supports for photoshop is that now we can add layer masks in the in the past if you if you had layer masks um in photoshop and then you wanted to import the file in moho it didn't work uh, the file couldn't be imported now even if you have a layer mask i will just save this to show you you can simply uh, drag this file and import it to moho i'm just importing it here and i will import it as a every layer as an individual layer so now you can see the ear has the layer mask already apply, uh, already applied so that is being supported now in photoshop it's an it's a nice detail i think um now I can undo this and I can remove this layer mask. I can, I can save this file and the file will be also updated in Moho. It will, oh, sorry. I think I didn't save. Ah, oh, no, I saved. Okay, if I save so you can see the file is being updated in Moho. Now, I want to tell you this because uh, while we were developing the, the improvements for the Photoshop uh, files, it is very hard to implement. Uh, it's very hard to keep track of every layer. Uh, Photoshop is not very friendly um, in the way you can you can create layers or, or you can identify layers. So 
it's very easy to break the file. So in the past, if you added a new layer in Photoshop or if, or you were working over that, uh, it was a bit easy to break the file or to lose the connection between the file and the Moho layers. But now we implemented a new system that keeps track track of those layers much, much better than in the past. And we we work very hard on this system. Actually, we tried like four or five different systems uh, before getting to this one because it was so tricky to make everything work. So I hope you you don't notice how tricky it is when you are using this. Uh, but yeah, it it was um, it was a bit a bit tricky. So let me show you. So for instance, now I can I can simply for instance I can go to the head and I can create a new layer and I will name this layer hat um, and I will simply paint um, let me select that I will paint a black hat for, for this character okay so that's it and now I will save and then I come back to Moho and it will take a while because Moho is uh, is making sure that the, the file is saved and then you can see the hat applied here and you didn't lose any connection and you have the hat exactly where you put it in the um, in the photoshop file and you can do the same like modify layers remove layers you can you can do every every kind of modification and moho will do the best to keep tracks of track of the of the modifications you are doing um so now just some advice when you are working with this um, we are following several ways to track the layers with with Photoshop. The first way is the the name of the layers. So Moho tries to get the name of the layers. So please try to keep all your layers with unique names. So that will make easier for Moho to recognize which layer is which. Uh, then if that fails, Moho uses the layer order. So let's suppose you have two hats and they, they have the same layer name and, and Moho needs to, to track them. Um, it will use the layer order to know which is the hat one and which is the hat two, for instance. So that is the third one, the, the second technique. And the, the third technique is, um, is the layer ID. The Photoshop files, they have a layer ID uh, that we uh, normal users, users can, can, can't see, but it's a name, uh, an internal name that the layers has. Uh, so you can use, I mean, Moho can use that to track, but it's it's a bit unstable. So we we left that as the third option to identify the layers. And anyway, a new option that is coming with Moho also, let's suppose nothing of this work. Um, you can still, double click any layer if you have any problem with any particular layer or you can or you simply want to replace that layer you can double click that layer in moho go to image and set search uh, source image here so now i can go to let me just go to my my folder here um wait webinar okay so you can go to to your folder and you can select your your image and now we have this new window in which you can select the layer you want. So even then everything fails or, or something is not being tracked or you are just, uh, you, you just want to change a layer, you can do that. So I could, I could have instead of the head, maybe I want another head. So I will just press okay. And now I have another head for instead of the, of the hat. Okay, so you can do that. And there are many, many improvements coming uh, with this version. There are also improvements uh, related to the blending modes. So we have more compa compatibility with the blending modes. The idea is that, the, the idea is that um, many big productions also use Photoshop or any other software to create backgrounds or characters. So we want to be fully compatible and we want to keep track of that work without issues. Uh, so that is the main goal of this. And it's very comfortable when you are working with a Photoshop file, a single Photoshop file that contains all your layers and, and, and you are sure that everything is working and no, nothing will be lost. Okay, now related to that, another um, improvement we made is um, about the saving system. 
maybe some of you had problems uh, when you were saving files. Um, th there was a problem that if Moho, for any reason, closed while it was saving a file, there was a chance that you could lose that file, which is a very bad problem to have. And we have a backup system. We have several systems to avoid that. But sometimes it still happened. So uh, our system now, when you save, what it does is that Moho saves, when you press save, it saves a copy of your file first. And then once Moho is sure that everything is done, when, when Moho is, is sure that the file is actually saved, it replaces that copy. I mean, it replaces the original file with that copy. So that way we, we have a better saving system and you shouldn't get um, messages like saying um, fail to open the, the, the Moho file, like to parse the, the file or something like that, the JSON. Um, the, the ones that have seen that message, they, they will know what I am talking about. But I am very happy that we are not seeing that problem anymore. OK. Now, um, let me jump to live mesh. So I want to show you something very quickly. I will just import this toy of a dinosaur. OK. So there's there are several ways to do that. But in this case, I, I'm just importing this image. And I will use the magic wand because this image, it doesn't have any alpha channel. It doesn't have transparency. So I will use the magic wand here to remove the background very quickly, very rough. But anyway, I don't have background anymore. And now I am in frame zero. I have this layer selected. And I can go to draw and create a smart warp layer. And what Moho does now is that it traces the alpha channel of this image, in this case, the transparency of this image, and it creates this uh, envelope over that image. So now what I can do with this is that I can go to any frame beyond frame zero, and I can start moving the points. And already, I am already animating this uh, this image. So I know it doesn't look good now, but I have already that animation. Or I can use the magnet tool. So if I if I use this magnet tool and I press Alt and I drag um, right or left, I can make the magnet bigger or smaller. So you can distort the entire thing much easier. So now we have a yeah we have a much uglier dinosaur, which is of course what what we want to do. Now, the good thing about this tool, I will just remove the, the keyframe I created. I will go back to frame zero. And I can actually continue drawing details for this. So let's suppose we want to create a blink for this dinosaur. So I will just zoom in here. And I will add some details for the eye. And you can see here that the software is automatically creating triangles around these lines. So basically, those triangles are moving the, the image. So I will create two circles here just to keep everything consistent. So now what, what I can do is if I go beyond frame zero, I can move these points and I can create a blink because when I move these points, I am moving the, the eye. And I can also, I will copy and paste this and I can make the, the eye bigger. I can also do that. Now, I know the the blue lines here, maybe they are too big for my artwork. They are covering the artworks. So what I can do is I can go back to frame zero. I can use the select shape tool, this one. And I can select one of the lines. And I can just go to the style window. And here in the style window, I can select another color for this line. Or I can select um, opacity for the line, so I can reduce the opacity for this line. Uh, let's suppose I want it green and maybe with some um, alpha here. And now also here, I can reduce the um, the width of the line. So if I right click and drag right or left, I can reduce this. So maybe this is what I want to see because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nicer line to see 
in this case. So now I am actually seeing what happens. And of course, if I want to have a better view, I can simply remove, uh, not sorry, not remove, remove, just hide the eyes and you can see what is happening here. So by doing that, then you can continue in frame zero, you can continue adding details. So let's suppose we want to open the mouth of this din dinosaur. So I can just adapt and add some points here. I'm, I'm using the add point tool. And maybe I will add a new line here to keep the consistency of the mouth. So let's suppose I have that. So now let me just remove the animation I already made, but now I could select some of the points and start simulating that this character closes the mouth. So I can just take these points and start playing with them. And of course, if it is not working in the way I want, I can continue adding more points or I can edit or I can remove some of the points. And now we have this, this movement very, very easily, or I can do the opposite, or maybe I want this to be a happier dinosaur. So actually I can just move this and try to try him to be happier. Maybe the eye wants, uh, I want the eye to be like this. So now this is a happier dinosaur. So that's it. So let me, let me just show you another example here. Um, I will create a new file and Maybe you have seen this uh, this gorilla. This is created by JB Bendam, um, and this is a PSD file. So it has several layers. I will import every layer here. Uh, it's a it's very big, so I will make it smaller. So oops, there. So with this one, I have several separated layers. I have the background here. I have the eyes uh, behind, I have the pupils, I have some shine, I have several several layers for the eyeballs, um, the ears, and the head, which is this entire layer. So I will do the same that I did. Um, so I selected the, the head and I will just go to create a smart warp layer. So now, the software will use the alpha to trace that layer. And now I can start adding details. And actually the, the, the eyes, they didn't work too well here. So I will just add some more points. And the lines here, they need to be straight because um, they need to create triangles. So that's why I, I am only adding straight lines here. Now you can see that um, these lines are holes inside of the mesh. So if I add any point inside of the mesh, any line, and I am using auto weld here, and I close this line, this will become a hole. So if I go to any frame different to frame zero, you can see this is a hole, okay? So if you close a shape inside of the mesh, you will create a hole. If you don't want to close it, I mean, if you don't want a hole, you just put the, the points very close to each other so you still have that uh that kind of circle here but you are not closing the the shape but in this case let's suppose i want the mouth to be a hole so i can just add points here and then i will close this shape let me I, there i close this shape and now this line is a is a hole, and of course I can I can now modify these points if I go to any frame different than zero. So I can modify the the mouth and start playing with this. And it's not working very nice uh, so far, but it's it is just because I need to add some more lines. So for instance, if I want to animate the mouth, um, maybe I can add some lines to keep this part of the of the head consistent, so I can have that, right? So now with that, I can start modifying my character and it starts to look better. I can hide this if I want. Actually, let me just show the rest of the, of the layer so you can see the full character here. 
So there you can start uh, maybe um, adding more points. Maybe you want to add a line to keep the lips consistent. Um, so I will just add a couple of lines here to keep the lips consistent. Maybe I want to add a new line here to animate the eyebrows. So what I can do now, and I will add a, a little point here, what I can do now, let me just remove the animation I, I made, is that I can move the eyebrows to go down and I can make this character to look, um, I don't know, angrier, maybe. So, or, yeah, there you have, it looks angrier. Now, you can see there is a, a small distortion happening at the top of the head. Uh, to avoid that distortion, I can simply put a line here. So anytime you are putting a line, you are you are you are saying like, okay, I want to keep this uh, flesh consistent here, so that flesh won't move. So it's very useful to put those lines at the borders, for instance, so that will keep the 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 character consistent. And then I can continue. Now I can I can go to the eyeballs, for instance, and I can select the pupils. And I can create a new a smart warp for the pupils. So the software will create these two circles here that I can, sorry, that I can animate also. So you can you can animate and you can modify them. Uh, also, I, I really like to use the magnet tool to make these kind of modifications, or or you can go to you can draw inside another line for the for the iris, so maybe you can not only move the, the entire eye, but you can also move the internal iris, which is not very natural, but you can try to do that. Um, now, uh, one, one nice thing about working with these lines is that first, if you, if you are modifying, so for instance, let me go back to the, to the, um, to the eyebrows here. Let's suppose I want some curve happening here. So I do this, but then I discover I need an, I need some extra points here, but I have already my animation done. I can simply go back to frame zero, add the extra points I need, and now those extra points are also moving because they are following the shape. So I don't need to, I just need to adjust them to create the curve I want, but I don't need to start from scratch with those points. So Mojo adapts the animation that you are doing already. Now, um, let's suppose, okay, so let's suppose we want to move the mouth, um, but we, we don't want to move the rest of the body. Right now I am using the magnet tool. So if I, if I use the magnet tool, you can see I am moving every single point. So I am moving the body also, right? I am moving like this border on the body. But now you can, what you can do is that actually you can select for one or or two or whatever amount of points of one line. And then if you press tab in the keyboard, every single point connected to that one will be connect, uh, will be selected too. So now I can use the magnet, but I can tell the magnet to move selected points only. So now I can use my magnet, but let me go to any frame different than zero. You can use the magnet, but you are sure that the magnet is only moving those points that you have selected. So this is very nice to edit the details. So again, if you want to animate the eyebrows, but you don't want to actually move the, the eyes, you can just select one or two points of the, of the eyebrows and press tab and then use the magnet to move all this. So I think it's very nice to animate this and it keeps everything consistent. And then you understand, understand that you are drawing lines and the lines make sense because they are the details of your character you want to, you want to animate. So now if I want to animate the mouth, maybe we'll just select the entire mouth here and just move it like this. And then of course I can edit some of the points by hand. But you can see how, how it is working. And now I can maybe can add another point here and here. And those points are already animated. So you can go um, 
Yeah, you are never done with the rigging, that, which is very nice because you, you once you don't need the triangulation is never done. You can just continue working over that. Um, and then, of course, you can save all this into um, um, into a smart bone. So if you create, a, if you convert this group to a bone, I can create a couple bones, and of course, I can animate this character with this, these bones, or I can use the bind point tool to animate those. Um, and then I can create a smart bone, maybe a smart bone here. So I will just create a new bone with no strength. Uh, let's say I will call it blink. Okay, so I will show the label here. And now I will open the actions window. And I will create a new action for this bone, which is selected, the blink bone. So I can tell the software, okay, every time this bone rotates down, I want the eyes these two groups to close so i can start animating that and maybe the the eyebrows they can also move down to help with the effect so of course i'm trying to do this uh, very quickly so it won't be perfect maybe i need to add some more lines but anyway we have this so now every time I want the character to blink, I can simply move this bone. So now the character is blinking and I can hide the warp layers. So I can just hide them and now we have this. And of course we can combine this with the rest. So it's very flexible. You can create um, some um, rotations, some some different stuff. I actually have, a, have another file. Let me just find it. I think it is this one. Let me just open this one. So yeah, I was just playing with some of the stuff here. So again, I have some blinking. I have some options for the mouth. I have this bone simulating a, a rotation. So yeah. You can play with this. Uh, in this case, this is an old test, and actually, it was using a just a JPEG, not not a PSD. So um, it's much simpler than than the rest. Um, oh, and one final detail is that you don't need to create a, a mesh for every single detail. So, for instance, we have the we have the mesh for the face here, um, but actually, our nose is in a different layer. So if you see when when I move the points, let me just remove this animation for now. Um, when I move the points of the head, let me just show you. So when I move these points, the, no, the nose is not moving because it's actually not following that mesh. So I have two options. I can create a, a, a mesh for the nose. I mean, I actually have three options. I can create a mesh for the nose. I can just leave the, the nose without a mesh and just move it with some bones or move the layer or whatever I want. Or the third option is I can double click the nose, go to the layer properties, go to the image tab and select the head warp uh, layer. So now the nose is also being distorted by this mesh. So you don't need to create a mesh for every single layer. You can create several meshes and actually you can even create uh, meshes that can control other meshes that are controlling images so you can have like several levels of animation there now um you can also create meshes by yourself so let's suppose i i want to create let me just um i want to show only one of the ears for now so let's suppose i want to create a mesh but i don't want this to be automatic because maybe i i want to apply this to a vector layer or, or anything like that i can just create a vector layer let me just call it mesh. And we also have the option here, if you go to draw, triangulate 2D mesh. So when you do that and you start adding points, these new points are being considered part of a mesh. So you can see the software is already triangulate them, triangulating them. So you can create your meshes by hand still. So you don't need to uh, always create the mesh that way, or maybe 
uh, we can do something else. I mean, after that, I, I just need to double click the ear, go to image and select the mesh here to attach the, the mesh to the ear. But another option is that, for instance, if I have this other ear and I, I use the menu, uh, create a smart warp layer, and the software will create a small warp layer, but maybe it, it, it just added too many points. I don't want these many points, so I can just remove this, and I can start my own mesh because maybe I have maybe I want like a very very simple mesh because this ear is actually not moving much. It's it's just uh, yeah, it's just doing something like that. So I don't want those many points. You, so you still have that option too. And the final option about this is that um, we have a new, in draw also, we have a new option to trace the image. And with this option to, to trace the image, the, the software uh, creates a vector layer from your image, but we now can create an alpha uh, option here. So we can trace the, the alpha and we have some more options to create that. And actually, if it creates the alpha, then you, we can just select all these points and maybe simplify them. So with this button, I can I can simplify these lines, and maybe then I can triangulate this, and I have a simpler uh, a simpler mesh. There was a, an extra line here, but there everything is is working fine now. So that's uh, that is the meshes. It's, it's very powerful. It's very quick to to use, and you can. Uh, you can do some very nice things, even when you have only one layer. Actually, let me show you this test with the with the dinosaur. Uh, I just lost the I just lost the image here. Okay, so we have that. This is only one image. It has this mesh, and we can already have a rig and an animation just using one layer, one mesh and some bones, so we have that and some, with some smart bones for the, for the mouth so, and some target bones for the legs. So you can see it's, it's very flexible, it's very easy to create something that looks very complex but actually it's very simple. So don't, don't tell anyone about that. Um, now I want to show you another feature that actually this feature was added uh, Specifically to animate crowds, but we can we can use it in other things too. Um, and it is called uh, copy deep frame. So normally, when you are working in Moho, you can copy and paste um, keyframes from one layer to another if the if those layers are um, are similar. But if you are animating a, an entire character, so let's suppose you are animating this character. And you want at frame, I don't know, 35, that maybe uh, I, I, I am selecting some of the layers. So this is a vector layer. Maybe I want the pupils to look to the left. Maybe I want the this eyebrow to look to go down. And maybe I want to ad adapt the eye to that movement. So I have this, so you can see I, I am editing several different layers here. I am just using Alt and right click to select them. Uh, so let's suppose we want to do that and maybe we want to change the mouth, which is a switch layer. So I want this, but maybe I want a bit wider and I want to select the, the tongue and move it here and maybe this, um, this part, I want it to be smaller, and maybe I want um, this part of the eye to appear here, so it's much more evil now. So yeah, I know I know it's not very nice, and actually I I, I don't like the hair in the way it looks right now, so I would just modify it to be pointy because for some reason it be, it became pointy now, uh, and maybe the pose of the bone layer. Um, I want the bone layer to be like this, so I, I'm just animating this character and I want to rotate this part uh, there and maybe rotate down and move it here 
so I have that. Let's suppose this is the pose I want. And now I want to I want to copy this pose into this other character which looks similar, but it is another character. And before I had to go to every single layer I I I moved and I had to copy the keyframes for what for that layer to the next layer. So I it, it was a very tedious process. So what we have now is that I simply select the bone layer of of this character which contains all the other layers and I can go to animation and copy the frame here. So what it does is it takes every single keyframe that is inside of this character or every every single pose and it copies it and I can go to any other frame now. Maybe I want to go to frame nine and I can simply go to animation and paste the frame and now exactly the same pose is being posed into the second character so you can you can copy and paste single frames or you can copy and paste a range of frames so the software bakes that range of frames so it can be like 10 frames or whatever number you want and you can copy them so for us uh, I work in Cartoon Saloon and we are working in a in a movie right now and we have to animate several uh, characters that are, are mostly the same little animals that are running jumping and going around uh, and we are we are using this tool to um, create an expression or create a jump or create anything and we can reproduce this into several of the of the characters at once so it's 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 very powerful it's very useful so we can have like 50 characters making actions across the scene um, and we can just recycle different animations with, between them so it's it's a very nice one it's like a simple menu and normally it doesn't have that um, the shortcut but you can assign a shortcut to this so yeah it's it's a very nice one um, okay and one of the of the last things uh, actually I, I forgot a very important thing uh, that I had to show you with this one. Um, actually, let me just show you with this. Let's suppose we want to export the animation. Okay, so I just go to File, Export. And if you had any previous version before 13.5, you know that 13.5 had not too many video formats to export and to import. So uh, we fixed that now we had a problem in the past and we had to remove this it's, it's like a technical problem that um, it was a bit hard at the moment to solve but now we solved this and now if you select video we have several different options to export videos and actually we even have Apple ProRes with Alpha I mean Mob ProRes so you can use that so you can export videos with Alpha uh, from Moho and of course you can import videos, you can import uh, mp3 again and, and many webp and many other formats. So Moho it, it, it has like the biggest library of formats uh, that Moho has ever had. So we are very very happy about that too. So it, this is a big one like internally <laughs> it was a big change. I know it looks like a small change here just in a menu but it, it's a big internal thing and I know many of you will be very happy about this. I mean, I, I hope at least. And now the, the last thing I wanted to show you, um, let me just open this because the, uh, this version of Moho has like very tiny uh, improvements that makes Moho uh, feel much nicer. And one of them, I, I have this character. This is an old character you can find in the library. Um, but if I go to, the vector layer here you can see there are many points and if i go to the bind points tool here um you know that every point that is bound to a bone has the same color of the bone so for instance this green bone has these two points that are are green right so now uh what we have added is that in the past if you selected the bone the points will be red instead of, let me just zoom in here. The points will be only red, so you couldn't see the color of that point. You couldn't see 
to what bone it was um, added. So we simply added the color here, which is again it's a very a very small change, but it really makes easier to know what you are binding. So for instance, let me just close this. Um, I can select this bone, and now let's suppose I want to bind these other two points here. I can simply select these two points and I can press bind points and you can see they change the color. I mean, I hope you saw that. So now they are orange also because this bone is orange. So it's it's um, it's a very small change, but it's very nice. And another small change, but that also makes <laughs> things much easier is that if you select a bone, uh, let's suppose I select the, the green bone and I bind these two points, I can just bind them. And now if I want to bind other points, I can simply select those other points and I don't need to worry about selecting the points that are, are, are already bound. In the past, I had to select every single bone point and, and bind them, but now I can just select whatever new point I want to bind and I can bind it. Okay, and and the final the final thing is that now we have also this button to unbind points. So if I want to reset a point, so for instance, I, I bound it to the wrong bone or, or I wasn't sure about what I was doing, I can simply select the points I want and I can select unbind here. And this means that these points will follow, I mean, will be resetted. So, so they will be, um, they will follow the strength of the bones. So it will be like a new, a, a brand new point um, unbound. So again, it's like very small changes, but they really make things um, easier. Uh, if you ask me, I, I am very excited about the new meshes. I'm having a lot, a lot of fun. Actually, just today I made this, uh, this little animated GIF of a Chilean politician here. So he had this uh, picture and I was just animating this with a couple of meshes. So yeah, I made that, this like uh, before having breakfast actually. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very easy to do. It's, it's very quick to rig. Uh, everything worked together and we are very, very excited about this uh, about this uh, release. So I hope you also enjoy it. Um, I hope this presentation wasn't too confusing. Thank you very much. So Mario, I don't know if you have any questions. Hi, Victor. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, we have a few questions. We know time flies. So let's go with some of them. For example, um, Alan and Ahmed, all, they both asked about uh, not closing the, the lines uh, while mm -hmm. creating the smart, uh, smart mesh. Uh, yeah. Why is that about? Can you explain that again? What's the difference yeah. of closing a gap and not closing it? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sorry it wasn't clear. Um, let me open. Let me. I will import the, actually, let me take the, uh, just a JPEG image of one of the characters. Um, mm -hmm. Give me one second, or a couple seconds, it seems to be, because I'm not finding what I want. Um, okay, I will just use this one. So. This is um no, this is a bad example. I'm sorry, I want to find the other one. That was from Alfredo Cáceres anyway, uh, Chilean illustration illustrator, very, very good. Uh, so I have this image, for instance. So this is not a PSD file, this is just a single image, all right? And I will remove the background here with the with the magic wand or the image masking tool. And now I will create a smart warp layer. Okay, so it created the points and I will add a couple points in some of the details. So let's suppose I want to separate the eyes from the, the rest of the face. So 
if I uh, start adding points here and I don't close this shape, so let's just keep it open. When I animate this, this will be um, like a normal mesh. I'm just moving, let me just, I'm just moving the points and I am moving the pupils and you can see the pupils. But if I come back and I close this, this shape becomes a hole. So now I am not seeing the eye when I am animating this. And this is this is useful for several reasons. It's because uh, you can add holes to your mask, or also you can add islands outside of the of the mesh. So I can have a separated island here, and maybe this separated island can have its own hole also. But it also works because I can, um, for instance, duplicate this layer, and I will go to image and I will remove the, the new mesh I created. Um, and for this duplicate, which I will call call it eyes, okay. Um, what I can do is I can create a new um, a smart warp layer again, but now instead of, of doing that, I will just select all the points and, re and remove them because I want to add new points. And actually I want to, at points only for the eyes here. So it, it is basically like separating the layers, um, separating the image in different layers. So if I create two islands here, now I have only the eyes. So in one of the images I have only the eyes and in the second image I have um, only the head or the, yeah, only the head or the face. Let me just, um, complete that mesh to create a better, a better example. So I will just close this. So having that, this allows me to have this layer separated. So now if I want to uh, move the eye, for instance, move the eye down or make it smaller, I can distort the face without distorting the the eyes or the pupils. So the, the eyes and the pupils are moving independently to the rest of the, of the mesh. So that's why you can create holes. Uh, when you close the line, you can create holes. And if you don't close it, you don't create a hole. You just create a new details in the, in the mesh. So for instance, again, if I want to animate the pupils, I can just create, no, sorry, I need to go to the, to the eyes, I want to hide this. Okay, I can just create a new circle here and I won't close it because I don't want to create a hole. So I keep it there without closing. And now um, I have all these meshes and now I can move the pupils here. So I can animate this. So that's, that's basically it. We, we give some tools so you can edit the images in, in different ways and you can remove some parts of the, of the mesh. I hope this clarifies uh, the question. Yes, absolutely. And another question is if you can create um, smart, uh, smart bone or actions with, the, with this new tool. Absolutely, yeah, they work normally. I mean, actually what you are animating is normal vector layers. They look like meshes. I mean, they are meshes, they are more complex than normal vector layers, but at the end of the day, they are just points that you are moving. So whatever you want to animate with a smart bone, it, it, it will work with these two. So so again, if, if, I, if I want to, let me just show you this. So. If I put all this inside of a group and I transform this group to a bone, okay, and now I will create a new smart bone. And, and now I, I will tell the software, okay, every time this smart bone rotates down, actually I want the, the eyes to close like this because the, this guy is angry every time I do that. Um, this will happen and maybe then I can create a second action for this same bone. So every time it goes up, 
the eyes will become bigger actually so like that and now i will do the same with the with the white part of the eyes here so now i have this um let me just add, oops let me just edit this there and maybe actually i can even make the pupils smaller because he's very scared now like that so i can go back to the main line and now every time i rotate this um actually let me remove the animation i had here okay every time i, ro I rotate this this will happen so yeah it's just like uh, animating with normal vector layers but now you have almost the same power of vectors but over the images awesome and um one question regarding wind uh, question mm -hmm. from Apino and uh, how to remove or disable the wind effect yeah you have two options let me just open that file again um mm -hmm. And I need to find it. So it works by um, the character. So in this case, I will I will just show you one one character. So the wind is working over these bones. So one of the options you have is you can select the bones you don't want to be affected by the wind, and you can go to frame zero and just go to the bone constraints here. And, and select wind here. So that means that those won't, won't be affected by the wind anymore. So the rest is still affected, but not these bones. And the other option is that, well, if you have any um, any keyframes for, for the wind, you can remove them, of course. But then in frame zero, actually, the wind still has some, op, uh, some values applied to there. So, you can go to the frame zero and you can go to the wind tool here. Let me just show you this one. Uh, and you can set the strength of the wind to zero. So once you do that, there is no wind affecting your character. So you have two options. You can tell, OK, this bone is not affected by the wind anymore. Or you can say, OK, there is no wind in this scene anymore. I hope that that helps. Yes, definitely. Uh, when Cynthia is asking if you can just uh, remind us who is the creator of the character with the, with the loot, like sort of guitar that uh, you showed us. Which character, sorry? The the character of the webinar. It's Alfredo Caceres, right? um the we have the, the the gorilla was made by jb bendam mm -hmm. um the this character was made by um maria pareja um these characters were made by oscar chavez and let me just go back to my folder here so um the dinosaur is a toy i got from google um this character yes. was made no sorry the um this character here yeah this character is was made by alfredo caceres uh this is uh, a sahara quesada um jv vendam a random dinosaur and alfredo caceres uh, so though i think those are the characters i um i showed here and the other characters uh, that are in the library um the the vitruvian man is uh, maria pareja this one is the the wind the night boy or something like that is the name i don't remember um is made by alfredo caceres maria pareja for the horse the fox is maria pareja the crow is um um Sara Quesada and the broccoli was made by Isabel Lozano and, and me. So anyway, the credits are all, all there in the library too. Okay, thank you so much, Victor. No and um, one last question because there are a few um, proposals, ideas for future updates. 
where can mm -hmm. people actually share their thoughts about new features? I think the the best place to share is um, to join the forum and 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 share your ideas there. We have several sections, and in some of them you can actually talk about your ideas and we are constantly reading the forum. That doesn't mean that we are going to apply every idea we, we see there. Um, we have limited time skills and uh, and, and team members, um, but we are always reading that and uh, many many of the ideas we apply to the software are, are coming from the users and um, many of the of the of the um, we have a very nice community there from users that have been using the software for a long time. So we we really appreciate their opinions there. Well, thank you so much, Victor, for another great presentation. We also want to thank all the people who joined us today. Thank you for all the questions. Unfortunately, uh, our time is limited, but we hope to continue participating uh, with us in our social media and learn more about Moco. There was a few questions that we could easily uh, respond through the question panel. But if you want to learn more about Moho, please visit our website, mohoanimation.com. Stay tuned in our social media for more information, events, promotions, and join the forum. You will find a lot of ideas, uh, animations, doubts that you might have. So with that, once again, thank you so much, Victor. Thank, thank you. Uh, and, and please uh, remember to tag us as Moho Animation and use the hashtag Moho Animation and spread the word. If you like the software, please spread the word and tell the people why you like it. And if you don't like it, yeah, be, be nice. You can say that, but be, be polite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody. And we hope to see you in our next event. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.